Okay. All three of us joined. So we can start our today's class now. Today we'll be dealing with something regarding this one that is uh, computer literacy. And so far as my knowledge goes, I was talking about the software issues regarding software. I told you the application software as well as the system software. And regarding system software, I told you about the operating system operating system and another name is the system software in operating system I also talked about the bundled utilities that usually come with operating system and some of the operating systems are there which are just the bare kernel or core which is not having the extra things or add-ons these are the bundle products. So some products are there like if you have the access of MS-DOS. So you will see that one MS-DOS is only available uh, without any accessories. So you only have the core operating system. So regarding operating system, one thing is that operating system depends on the system hardware and operating system is having its own architecture, development architecture based on the hardware itself. And that's why you will always see that one, one particular type of operating system cannot be installed in uh, the devices or the hardware with which it is not compatible at all. And that's why we are having the Android operating system. This is only for Android operating system, only for the smart devices, smartphones, as well as right now the televisions also. We are getting that one Android operating system and like some Google Assist or Google devices, extra devices. So where this Android system is there, but Android operating system, this is based on ARM architecture, ARM, ARM based architecture. And that ARM based architecture is not at all suitable for installation in PCs or laptops. And that's why you will see you cannot install Android operating system in any laptop or in any desktop but you can run different simulation software like uh, one software is like that that is Nox N-O-X Nox you can install Nox in your desktop and by installing Nox you can run the Android operating system over it this is a kind of virtualization technology and this is known as virtualization technology. So uh, today we'll be going to talk about all these things like what is virtualization and what is, I think last time, last day I left one particular aspect that is the partitioning of the disk. But if you want to install more than one operating systems in your machine, then you have to partition your hard drive or even if you have a single operating system, there are different partitions in your hard drive. So many of the, right now see the hard drive capacity has, uh, is enormous. So you can have the 2 TB, 4 TB hard disk also in the market. But previously we had near about 500 GB or 1 TB is the minimum right now, entry level machines, they are also having the 1 TB hard, TB hard disk. But the whole hard disk, the 1 TB hard disk is not at all required for any operating system and the more amount of space will be allotted for 
on operating system, the most sick time will be there. It will uh, try to try to read the whole physical space. And that's why, obviously, the time for searching will be much more uh, bigger or greater than that of the smaller partitions. So that's for why we usually make partition of the hard drive. Partition is nothing but uh, making some chunks, chunks to the whole hard drive, like two, three, or four different types, different chunks. So. In one TV hard drive, you can make four partitions like 250, 250, 250, and 250. So although you won't get 250 for each and every partition, there will be some bit of uh, bytes will be reserved, some amount of space will be reserved for system files and for the memories also. But you can make this one so four so that your boot operating system, main operating system can be booted from a specific, specific, um, specified amount of space and just by enhance the read speed and six speed or upload speed from the hard drive. Now, regarding partitioning, I, 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 I can show you that one, but right now I'm not in a mood to tell you that one, that is the partition. So I'll tell you that one later. But today, let us do something with the software itself regarding that one. We are going to the say that is the application software. And now you see in application software. We have now you see, are you getting the screen? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Yes or no? Yes, yes, we are getting the screen. The voice is coming very low. Okay. Now say yes. As well as getting our voice very low. So might be now say uh, let's start with this one. That is now we are going with this. That is software in libraries or use of software in libraries. The software in libraries is a misnomer. It doesn't make any sense. But that is the use of software in libraries. Now, whenever we are talking about the requirement of software in libraries, uh, we require mainly two types of software. One software is obviously, uh, that is software in libraries, broadly two categories. One category is the OS, that is operating system, system software, and another one is the AS, that is the application software. This is the application. Now, this OS application. Now, this OS can be or this OS may be free or this OS can be paid. Now, whenever you are saying free, you can use Linux and whenever paid, you can use Windows or you can use, that is, let's say Unix. Even you can use 
the paid versions of Linux. There are paid versions also. If you search internet, you will see that one. One company known as Red Hat, Red Hat Corporation. And this Red Hat is selling their Linux for the corporates, Red Hat. Now another company is there, S-U-S-E, SUSE. They are also selling Linux distribution for corporates. But they are having their own free versions also. This is many times right now. These are known as community version. Not the free version or like that. Right now they have changed this one. Community version community version so you can use any of these operating systems for your libraries so first and foremost thing is that you require operating system if you have enough money you can go for the paid version windows if you have no money but you have the strong desire to run software or rather digital platform you want to make your library as a digital hub so you can start with the free operating system that is the linux itself now regarding learning curve linux learning curve is a bit stiff like that and windows learning curve is another like that so you can use any of this and regarding application software this one this is the tailor-made one so in libraries you require those software which are pertinent to your daily job which are relevant required for information access which are relevant for information storage and retrieval and at the same time, some of the utilities also. The tailor-made packages. So, packages. So, in software in libraries, so whenever you, are, you have to choose the software in libraries, so first and foremost thing is that you have to choose the operating system. First of all, you purchase the hardware. Once you purchase the hardware, the system itself, then you have to procure operating system. Many of the times, whenever you will be procuring your software hardware, there is a chance that the machine will come, machine will reach to you or machine will be delivered to you with pre-installed operating system as this is the case for most of the laptops as well as the big machine, the big giant companies machine like Dell or other companies, HP, Dell like that. So with this one, first thing is that choose operating system. And I told you that one, suppose you are working in a rural library, you do not have money for purchasing the books, but you have a strong desire to run machine in your library. So choose Linux. And if you have money, you can go for Unix, you can go for Windows, even the Windows desktop version, like the enterprise version, or rather the home version, or the network version of the Windows, that is Windows NT version. So it depends on your pocket. And then you are going for this one, that is application software. Now, application softwares are rather the tailor-made packages for the libraries. And in application software, most of the application software specifically designed for Linux, these are free as well as open source. So you can easily opt that one for running in your libraries or with all the library machines. Or even if you have the money with you, you can purchase software from the different software vendors, commercial vendors or commercial developers for the Windows platform, even for the Linux platform. So this is the scenario whenever you will be running 
a library and you will be calling that your library is computerized or your library is automated. So apart from the hardware, you have to start with the software also. Now we are going to the next one. Now in application software, we have two things. That is the open source and source is two. The open source. You can choose anything between open source and closed source. Now, whenever you will be choosing open source, there is one catch. And whenever you will be choosing the closed source, there is another catch. What are the catches? In open source, main problem is problem is you P P O R T support. This is the main problem. Problem. Main. Problem. As open source software is given uh, free access as well as it is coming with the source code itself. So support in that sense is not provided by the developer or vendor, but the community where lots and lots of volunteers are there and several forums are there, online forums are there. So you can have the support from that, but the direct support may not be possible or direct support, you may not get the direct support from the developer. And if you have the emergency situation, if you have the emergency, then you may have to hire people proficient with the source code so that they can help you whenever you are in trouble. So for that one, you have to pay. So this is one problem that's the sub. But in closed source software, this one is the advantage. So as because this is closed source, so they are liable to provide you real-time support so the support is fine it's good support but problem is the updation updation and main problem is the source code itself alteration 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 now what is alteration now let me give you one example alteration now see two things one is the libre office i think you have heard this thing libre office this is one software available there's office package this is office package freeware open source office package available on both the platforms, Windows as well as Linux. And this is open source. You can have the full source code of LibreOffice. You can download that one from any repository. And at the same time, you have the MS Office, that is a Microsoft Office. So you have this one. So all of us, or most of us, we are using this one, either legal version or illegal version. We are using the Microsoft Office. Now, the real problem with the Microsoft Office and LibreOffice is that LibreOffice is very good software, excellent software. Even it can open Microsoft Office documents also. It can save the documents in Microsoft Office format like DocX, PPTX, everything, all these things. Are, so you can say that one, it is interoperable. It can open Microsoft Office formats. It can open this one. It's OK. But the support is restricted through community mode. So you cannot get the real-time support. But in MS Office, the real-time support is there. Now in LibreOffice, as because the source code is available, suppose you are having the alignment like uh, left, center, and then you have the right. And then you have the justified. Okay. And now you want that some cases the top, some cases down, then middle. There's a vertical alignment. This is actually the horizontal alignment. This is a vertical alignment. So suppose you do not have the vertical alignment feature in LibreOffice, but as, as because you are having the source code, and if you know any person 
who is conversant with the language by which LibreOffice is written. So you can hire or you can study that source code and you can, in, you can insert or you can uh, uh, extend LibreOffice by including this one because the source code with, is with you. One single individual can do that one of his own for the benefit of the masses or rather the benefit of him or benefit of his peer group. But in case of MS Office, if this feature is absent, although this feature is already there in MS Office, this is just an example, illustrative example. But if in MS Office you want to get a new feature, that is a feature, now MS Office will not entertain your request because MS Office will always try to find out whether that feature is being asked by lots of their subscribers or lots of their customers or not. So once they will have lot of customers or many customers are asking for that one, only by that time they will change this one. But if you ask only yourself, if you ask that one only for yourself, they might ask you one hefty amount for customizing this software. And that is a big problem with the closed software. So in open source software, one thing is that either you have to learn the programming, you have to learn programming, or rather you can hire the programmer and you can give him the source code by analyzing the source code. He can identify the shortcomings, the bugs, and he uh, is able to insert the new code over there and recompile it. But in closed source, as because the source is not available, so you have to depend on the vendor's mercy or rather the developer's mercy, whether he is really willing to include that feature or not, whether he is really ready to develop that feature or not, just for you. But if he sees the profit only, he will not give you any such thing. So that is the problem with this one. So both of the softwares are having their own advantages and disadvantages. So, but at this time, whenever we are talking about Linux, whenever we are talking about the open concept, that is the open source, open movement, open science, open education, open educational resources, open knowledge. So everything, whenever we are talking about open, and as because the open is having the embedded concept that is the sharing is caring. So we are also favoring that one open source. So if you have the opportunity to use this one or if you are serious about to support this open source movement, that is the information and computing for all, so you can opt for open source, but I'm not saying that one, that is a closed source software is uh, bad. Closed source software are rather more monitored as because the developers earn their bread and butter from it. And that's why they are always liable to you to give you the better support. But in no way they will give the source code to you because this source code is a uh, main thing for his earning, this is the raw material, this is the premium material he's having for earning his revenue, so close source. So now, uh, in library, the third one is, in library, we are using different types of software different types of software i didn't mention the name of it so i will mention the name whenever i will talk about this one but the different categories this is the types means this is the categories what are the different categories of software we do require in libraries first and foremost thing that is the database management system so we have the database management system, we have the learning management system, not learning, 
this is a library management system so one is the learning management system another one is the library management system so both are lms so you can see this one you can um, take the both for us but first of all we require the library the traditional library management software then we require the digital library management software you must have the clear understanding of reference management software then the citation management software then research support tools that is risk for software for research software for data analysis or big data analysis data analysis and big data analysis software for messy data analysis software for text mining and at the same time you will require the web browser the web browser and then database manager then you require scripting language knowledge of s c r i p t i n g scripting language scripting language you require this one the scripting language then at the same time you will require some of the software which helps you to retrieve data from web and which is known as uh, that is the z39.40 compliant software z39.40 compliant software and then you require the software for federated search federated search sir then you have to understand something like discovery tools discovery tools then you require the csv format then you have to know json format it would be better if you know something like php and at the same time something like perl c plus c plus plus and lastly scripting is already done and multimedia authoring software multimedia so these are the different types of software application software that you require to know or you have to have some bit of clear idea regarding this so now so i am here now i am here so now let me stop a bit and let me give you the chance to take some breath and tell me if you have any thing in your mind that you want to ask that you didn't get you want to know or rather you require something more if you require anything so you can say that one otherwise i will again proceed to that one so this is just i am giving you some bit of break for grasping right. yes 
Sir, what is the requirement for uh, Linux paid version? There are lots of support available for Linux open version. So what is the need? What is the need? What is the need? Okay. Okay, now this is for Miss Shagota. Present now and the screen is shared. Okay. Now see this one. This is the Red Hat store, or rather, you can go to the Red Hat com, then we'll come to the store. Now, see why this is Red Hat. This is Red Hat because see the hat is red. Okay, so this Red Hat is one company right now, it is rather maintained by Oracle. So, Red Hat. Now, if you go to the product, now you will see there going for Red Hat Enterprise Linux, Red Hat this, Red Hat OpenStack platform, Red Hat Virtualization, and a lot of things. So you better go for the Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Check it. Now you see what is this? The hybrid cloud. Enterprise Linux is the world's leading enterprise Linux platform. Is the open source operating system, is the foundation uh, from which you can scale existing apps, roll out emerging technologies like that. And most important thing is that here is try it free. You can try, but even you can buy it. And now see, try it free. This is a trial. And then the buy. See online by check it Linux platform price Linux enterprise server. See the price starts at $350. Red Hat Enterprise Linux for virtual data centers $2499. Red Hat Enterprise Linux Workstation, that is $180, okay? And this is what developer suite, developer workstation. Now, Linux developer support. And here you see the catch. 25 Red Hat Enterprise Linux developer suite subscription with unlimited number of incidents and your choice between two of our fastest support response item. And lastly, this one. So, what is the important thing is that whenever you will be purchasing this one, this enterprise or any version where they are charging money, this version is a customized version, customized version for that type of organization that type of corporate houses where the Linux, the version of the Linux is required more security, more robust thing, more power, and the code is super fine, trimmed down, uh, trimmed down codes, uh, that source code. And most important thing is that the support, 
that is important thing they are charging that one from the support for the support so you have to rely on the third parties or any forum so you can write them you can call them you can text them any time 24 hours you will get the service and you see suppose you are running one financial management company like hdfc or rather icici bank where a lot of mission critical data is there and at the back end you are running the linux server so the community server as because it is not supported in that way and whenever you got stuck at 12 noon or 12 am night so obviously you have to resolve the issue virtually in no time so there is no point of writing that one into any forum i got stuck so please help me you require support at, at that very moment and that's why you have to call the red hat people or rather susi people or other people i am rather here better you try to resolve the issue so by taking team viewer by taking remote access they immediately resolve that issue even they do the backup for you so this is they are charging for the support as well as customization made within the code for the corporates or rather for the corporates or rather the developers so this money they are charging for their full-time support for them. this is why they are charging got the point Yes, sir. Now, see, suppose you got one software uh, from one computer magazine, or rather, you downloaded Linux version from some places. But obviously, you will see that one. If you really want to install Koha, have you ever tried to install Koha in your laptop or desktop? No, sir. I tried using You tried? Yes, sir. I have you tried New Gen Lee. New Gen Lee. Okay. Harabuz. Okay. That is all. The LJ Harabuz New Gen Lee. Fine. It's okay. And there is the Verizon technology. Okay. New Gen Lee. And Jaydeep, you tried? Sir, I tried uh, Koha, sir. You installed Koha? Yes, sir. I have installed it. But now uh, in my desktop, uh, I have deleted it because there uh, was some problem in hard disk. So, so my hard disk is corrupted. So uh, that's why I have to delete it. Okay, no problem. So you tried that one. So now you see, so suppose you are running Koha, but you are running Koha in your own machine, in your own laptop. Even it, if the hard disk gets corrupted, so you can uninstall that one. No problem. So you can reinstall this one as because you didn't have any such kind of data which is having the value. But just think of those people who are running their software for the production level or for the service level. Now, if they have the data, but at the same time, the data gets corrupted or there is a malfunction in the hard drive. So what they will do? So they need support. And that's why the support is always pricey. And that is why this is the important thing. So you have to purchase support. Even in Calcutta, for your information, I am telling you, I think Shagota might be knowing that one. In Calcutta, there is one, not one, rather two corporations, companies are there. One company is known as L2C2 Technologies. Have you heard the name of L2C2 Technologies? Yes, sir. It is in Salt Lake. The Indronil is there. Indronil. Yes, in, sir. Indronil, Indronil is there. And actually, Indronil came to our my university also. We, I, we asked him to come to deliver lectures regarding this coin like that. So we have a good bonding also. Stephanie is also doing with Indronil. So. That's the way I'm telling you. So Indonesia is there, and lot of lot of lot of the colleges in West Bengal, they are uh, 
subscribing or they are purchasing support from L2C2 technologies and they are charging for that. So although Poha is rather a free software, but you see the librarians, many of the librarians are there. So they do not have that expertise to handle all those things regarding Linux. Linux being one, uh, although graphical user interface is there, but the beauty of Linux is in CLI, the command line operations, command line interfaces. So you have to know the command line info, uh, interface or rather the different uh, commands for that one you have to issue. And at the same time, you may have to customize that one. You have to change your port, port files. You have to change your Apache configuration file. You have to change your Koha site enable file, Koha HTTPD file. So a lot of things are there. So that is why you require support. But you can learn this one from web because Bimal is having a very good site for this one. That is a Koha Geek. That site is very good site. You have the one very good distribution by ARD and Sunita Varbe. That is the Linux uh, for that is that that is on that is based on Lubuntu. Lubuntu. That is also a very good distribution available from SourceForge and PSM developed one software that is Linux for librarians LFL. And so a lot of different versions of Koha are there, but these are, but if you install Koha with your own, you will develop some bit of confidence. But everyone, whenever you have to install that one for your college, and whenever you have to show the result output of what you are doing with that machine to the library authority, to the library committee, you always have to be careful about that one. You yourself may not be able to resolve all the issues and that's sort of why you might have to take the help of the third parties or one agency. And while you'll be going for the agency, then you have to pay. So that is what is, although Linux is free, but you have to pay for that one. Okay. Now, uh, any other thing? Other concern? Uh, any other? Any other question? Okay. Now you do not have the question at all. Very good. Uh, see this one and now as because you are not having any question let me ask you the question now see I already told you these are the different categories of software that librarians have to work with and that's why they must have a good literacy regarding this type of software literacy in what sense that is what is that on what platform does uh, do this um, software run whether these are interoperable or not if you have to select those softwares then what are the criteria on which you will select that one so this administrative portion, as well as little bit of activity that is a bit of so simple running of this one, this is important. And but for the researchers, these are very important because it depends on your research topic. And at the same time, right now, no research, specifically in life science research, uh, software plays a big role. Many, many of the times you have to take the help of different library management, library software, not library management software, different software utilities, tools, just to minimize your human effort or minimize your time consumption or rather that is the, because you have the paucity of time and just to minimize the spending of time, you may have to require the usage of this software. 
Now, first thing is the database management. Now, tell me that one. So, have you ever used any database management package for the database management package that can be used in libraries? Sure, I have used MySQL. You use MySQL. I think everyone use MySQL. Those who work with Koha, they used MySQL. And those who are doing the online or rather the having their websites or develop something, so they work with that one. So now you use MySQL, and that is a free software, MySQL, and a fork of MySQL is also known as MariaDB. So one you can use both any of these two that is MySQL software as well as the MariaDB. Then another database management software is there that is the PostgreSQL. PostgreSQL, uh, if you use uh, this space, if you try to install this space, the this space is working best on the platform PostgreSQL, P-O-S-T-G-R-E-S-Q-L. Sir, I use PostgreSQL for new gen D. Okay. That is also good because PostgreSQL, MySQL, you can use MySQL also for uh, this space. There is no problem. Only thing is that you have to connect that one with the real parameters or database connect connectivity configuration. So you use NewGenLib. So NewGenLib can be, can, can be can, you can run NewGenLib by using even Microsoft SQL Server also. Only thing is that the parameter connectivity is important. Very good. You use PostgreSQL. So apart from that, we are having another very good um, SQL Server. That is the Microsoft SQL Server. But Microsoft SQL Server is not free. There is one express edition available. If you ever run Sol um, demo version, you will see that one. Sol demo version is coming with Microsoft SQL Server Express which is a very trimmed down version of um, Microsoft SQL Server, real Microsoft SQL Server. And real Microsoft SQL Server is rather pricey, costly, and this is that um, the price is dependent on the number of users. So number of users, they are calling that one number of seats. So number of seats at a single point of time, if 25 fellows are using this one, so they will charge for that one. If your total number of users is 30, they will charge different way. But Microsoft is having the educational licensing policy. So that's for why uh, this thing will be reduced. But if you want to run Microsoft SQL Server, you have to purchase it. Otherwise, you can use MySQL, you can use PostgreSQL, even there is one very, very small and free SQL server available that is known as SQL Lite. SQL Lite, SQL 3 Lite is right now available. And this software is also very good, not only for the library databases, as well as for the web software, also web developed software. So software for web applications. So you can develop software for the web applications also by using SQLite. So I talked about three or rather five. One, two, three, four, five. Four. So one is SQLite, second one is Microsoft, sorry, MySQL, third one is PostgreSQL. And lastly, I talked about this one that is the my Microsoft SQL Server. But apart from that, there are other softwares also like you see DBase, Fox Pro. These are also the database management system, but these are not the relational database management system. Right now, whenever we'll be talking about database management system, we have to talk about relational database management system. Do you have any idea regarding what is relational database management system? 
all entities are connected with each other what uh, each entities are connected with each other that is known as relational data was that is you say there is a concept of primary key and foreign key in case of this type of relational database management system so your primary key must be related with the foreign key of a second table and if you do this thing like this so it will create the er relationship that the entity relationship model er model entity relationship model so that's why this type of database is i having lot of tables not a single table these are not the flat database that is one table is having all information these are having lot of tables and each and every table is connected with other table with the help of primary key or foreign key primary key as well as the foreign key that is known as entity relationship model okay Pavitra Sharma. Yes, sir. Are you getting this one? Yes, sir. So this is the entity relationship model. So I can show you that one later. What is the entity relationship model? But right now, just to go with the categories. Now, second thing is that library management software. You know that one library management software. And regarding library management software, so. these categories these types whenever i am saying you these types can be both open source as well as closed source okay both closed source and open source so in library management software as um, just sagata told that one new gen leave is one library management software then you can start with that one the library management software lots of library management softwares are available so these are open source as well as the closed source open source software means you have the new genly then you have open biblio you have php my library then you have the koha then you have slim that is s l i m slim uh, slim plus not slim plus plus slim plus and might be others also so these are rather and if you go to port canyon uh, in webs uh, in the web in the google web address you can type port canyon.net you will get lot of such library management software available there so php scripts are available so library management for windows there are also lots of variations of that one and most what noting in india is libsys you know libsys is available both linux unix as well as windows platform then we have our uh, government goodies that is the soul itself then n numbers of library management packages uh, from different vendors and right now many of the vendors they have already understood what mark is they have started including the mark 21 tag formats and iso 2709 formats by this way you can uh, export and import the data the mark compatible data from other databases also if you if you download the data from the library of congress catalog if you download the data from uh, other different uh, like wildcat and you can incorporate that data in your own library catalog by using by importing that that one through iso 2709 format or the mark 2 format okay this is possible now third one is dlms this is known as digital library management system d l i s digital so it's not dls uh, dlms digital library management system okay tell me the name of any two digital library management system 
डिस्पेस ई प्रिंट डिस्पेस ई प्रिंट ओके एनी अदर this space and e prints these are the de facto digital library management tools greenstone is fine but greenstone is having its own limitations and this space is having its own so but greenstone is preferable because you can uh, burn that one in cd and even greenstone can be used in offline uh, where wherever uh, this space is also available if you install this one in your local server you can run this one but this space is robust in feature as well as this space got too much of fame because of the patronization of hp and as well as the mit that is massachusetts institute of technology so hp helen packards back that is backing and at the same time the mit's expertise that made this space near about a kind of standard for maintaining the digital resources and most of the big companies libraries even apart from the libraries the web vendors they are keeping their digital resources in uh, this space platform greenstone is good but metadata harvesting or metadata assignment in greenstone is bit cumbersome and lot of things you have to write by your own hand the same thing goes with that one but if you can integrate the metadata harvesting with other metadata repositories and from where you can search the metadata and you can dig that metadata out and whenever required you can just change your metadata then it would be better but in greenstone this feature is rather limited so now you have the reference so do you know any such kind of this do now see in the second case the platform we have i have written that one win l W L this means Windows and Linux, and do means Windows and Linux are there at the same time. Web platform is also available, and open close means the open version is also available. Close version is also available. Now reference okay. manager, yes yes. Sir, so is Fedora digital library so management software? Yes yes, Fedora is also. A department, sorry, a department. I'm rather. Okay. Fedora is also one digital library management software. Fedora. So, if possible, I will show you that one. How to install that one? So, let's see. Okay. Now, reference. I think you people use different reference soft management software. So have you ever used any reference management software? Yes, sir. Mendeley. Mendeley. I use Mendeley, Zotero. Then have you used EndNote? No, sir. No. no, sir. So EndNote is there. Have you used Jabbrave? No. No. Okay. Let me show you that one. So okay, I am presenting everything so I can show you that one. Oh, this one is not important. This one. Now see this thing Google and now and okay. I am telling the name of a company. Tell me whether you know the name of the company or not. The name of the company is Thomson Reuters. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you know? Yes, sir. You join the yes, Pravitra Sharma. Yes, heard the name of this company. 
actually why and for what context you got heard the name of this company software huh? for for what sir for indexing service okay indexing databases okay very good now see let me tell you one very important thing and this is this is very important specifically for the researchers thomson writer is or rather was a company developed by sir eugene garfield do you know, do you know the name of eugene garfield yes sir okay yes, the sir. person who developed science citation index and later the social science citation index and who is the pioneer or rather even after he after this uh, after after 10 10 not 10 rather i think garfield he died the six or seven years back so after the death of till date if you rank the library sci authors in library and information science field you will see that one still date garfield is coming to at top the rank one so garfield sir eugene garfield he developed thomson and reuters and right now this particular company has changed its name and known as clarivet clarivet analysis so right now they are so end note was or is a product of okay, see clarivate analytics so n node and this is what the n so n node is a reference manager and n node is a reference manager and you can say see by this is the version 20 of endnote is right now available and you will see that one this is a price of endnote that is upgrade license is this student license is this 11000 is your student license and you have to prove your eligibility but this endnote is a beauty beauty in what sense i do have the endnote so, and this is a real beauty to work with EndNote. But however, I will um, tell you this one later. So EndNote, this is, you see, the trademark. So this came from the Thomson Reuters or rather Clarivate Analytics. So, okay. so now this one. And if you had think that I do not have money and almost all the times you are saying open source, open source, but whenever it is coming uh, for the software, you are showing us only the pricey tools. So that's why right now I'm showing you one thing that is known as Jabref. This is the free reference manager same as Jotero or like that of Jotero, but more powerful than that than Jotero. And you will see that one is a Windows software. You can download it in Windows and you can run this one. You can search literature from different places. And for your literature review, this Javdrip and EndNote is a beauty. You can search the relevant literature from the web and it will download that one, even the abstract, even the full text if possible. And from that one, you can collect all information like that. So this is the Jabrip. Now, another software is available, although not free, but doing, but usually do a very good job that is known as Sita V. So it is rather a pricey. Pricey means, but not that much. Sita V. This is also a very good software reference manager. And is a free download is available. But if you want to procure that one, 
you will see setup in for windows so free version is available and if you want to purchase the full version it's just like 5000 something so 5900 most probably i forgot right now setup fee Now see purchase students purchase let me see all the times it is coming like this way most probably okay yes Sita V for Windows uh, without login now see this is 5000 and then you have to give the VAT 900 so it is 5900 but Citab is also a very good alternative to EndNote, and by paying 5,900, you can have the Citab uh, license for you. So this is what the Citab. So there are, there are. Apart from that, you have, you have. This one previously it was known as RefMe. But right now it has this one that side this for me and you can go for anything like that. So from the web itself, you can use the reference managers. So just APS time and choose the website. Suppose you have one website, click it and write here the web URL HTTPS https colon slash slash blisnbu.sc.in and search and you see this is what is your thing okay we found this one that is authors nothing is there then first name author head then B L I S N B U website yeah publish website name name D E P A R T M E N T Department of L I S University of North Bengal. Publisher, U N I V E R S I T Y University of North Bengal. Access date, complete citation, and you will see this one here. This is your APS style. Citation is ready. Okay, and you can copy this one just copy this and if you need to keep it as because you already copied this one your bibliography so this one so now uh, open in your notepad paste it it's done but if you use mendeley or jbref or like that so this will be auto generated so alphabetically it will be arranged so in this case also it will be arranged but you have to save that one in your by making one account so there are other you know so this is what uh, ref me i think bibme is also there another site is there that is known as bibme got now write b i b m e with me see this is also free bibliography and citation maker so lots of such things are there so now so there is no need to do this one anymore so now 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 now
Now, next is now reference is over citation also. Now, regarding citation, citation. Now, tell me what is citation? Giving acknowledgement. Uh -huh. Giving acknowledgement to the author. Giving acknowledgement. Okay, then now whenever we are going for citation, suppose citation is nothing but you are mentioning the name of the article or name of the previous document where that particular information was published. So you are citing that. So in case of citation analysis, we are having two things. One is the cite, cited document and one is the citing document. Two aspects. Now see, citation count or citation analysis is constituting a bigger part in our life science research. It's actually taking a big thing. So you know, the bibliometrics, the scientometrics, the oeometrics, all the things these are dependent on citation study, citation analysis. So if any one of you right now, if you still want to do citation study, so you need to know whether there are any such kind of citation analysis tools or not. And right now you see uh, citation analysis or rather the reference list of references at the end of one article is not the only parameter for measuring the influence of the author or other influence of the paper. Right now, different metrics came and such metrics are known as alt metrics. These are known as alt metrics, but still, and it is, huh? So, Shambhar, I am going to tell you that I am going to tell you that I am Somebody Jabo, somebody who collect a meeting or a chat, a raggy of it. He could have got a catch key last day. Naki, I let it get somebody in Rekaja de Valo, somebody in Amra Kuru. I am in class next day, Bolder. छब्बीस छब्बीस तारीख सोमवार छब्बीस तारीख के मध्य तो देर पढ़ाते आवे ऑनलाइन अपलोड करते आवे आज ठीक है तो ताले अमी आज के अमी पोरे तो देर के तो देर ईमेले पढ़िए दीच्छी जाहे ना आ रही है ते तारा चार बुझे गए थे ठीक है चार और ताकि लिखते आवे हमारे व्हाट्सएप कोरे पढ़ाते बोल रंग इनफरमेशन दूहजार उन्नीस लिखे दीते तो समय की बेल आज पढ़ी ठीक ठीक है बुझे गे if you want to do citation analysis now, then what you can do? Now you see, I'm telling you. 
uh, one very good software that was available and this software was also developed by uh, Sir Eugene Garfield and it was available from Thomson Reuters site. Initial phases, Garfield distributed that software free of charge but lately after that one whenever uh, people started using that one they ch changed the policy and uh, priced the software as $99 by that time near about 6000 rupees but ultimately he stopped developing that one and that's why right now that software is not available but still that software is very much helpful for citation analysis and that software is known as hist site software this is his site software and you see in if you go to wikipedia you will get that one his site is a software package used for bibliometric analysis and information visualization it was developed by eugene garfield the founder of institute of scientific information and the inventor of the important information retrieval tool like current contents and science citation index. Okay. So it was there and ultimately this one is stopped. His site was on Windows software and it works with Internet Explorer. Okay. So if I do not know whether you will be able to download that one but i have the copy of it so i can upload that one in my in our departmental site but now see this is site see the clarivate analysis system analyst support i think it's still available to download from this one uh, his site yes his site is important his site is no longer in active development or officially supported so, okay, but you can still use it for this one. That is the attachment. I do not know. I, it is not available. Okay. So, his site. That was one software for, uh, for, for, for citation analysis. Now, I cannot run this software right now here because this machine is the machine in which I am rather showing you. Oh, yes, his site installer is there. Okay, got it. Yes, this is the his site installer. You see, this is installing uh, installer.chip. So you can even install this one from this page by going to this one and you have to run this one under Windows platform. So you can even find out the H index, you can find out G index. You can find the impact factor, everything. So you can use this one from, uh, you, you can find out this one there. And then we have another software for citation indexing that is known as Deep Excel. A bit hard tool, but it's a very, very, very good tool by Ole Parson. This fellow, this one that is Ole Parson, he died, you know, just a few days, few years back, died. Ole Parson, Bib Excel, he developed this software, Bib Excel. This is the, and you can download the lat latest version that is from 2007. I downloaded that one and I executed that one in, in the stain 64 bit, and it still runs. No problem. You can also try to download this one and use this one a bit and there are so many exercises are there so you can download that one the web of science data and it will take some bit of time to learn but once you will learn that one you will see that on your citation analysis even you can write articles by using this software that is taking the data from different places and placing the data and analyzing the data by using this software so this software is a very good software for uh, citation analysis so that you can find out co-citations, bibliographic coupling, subject mapping and almost all. 
whatever the different aspects are there in citation analysis, you can do this one. And lastly, you have the impact factor or like that. So if you really want to get the impact factor of any journal, so you can go to my website here. Here I have gave one particular tool so that you can uh, get that one. This is my website and just you go for this one, the my software tool download. I think most probably it's under download. Yes. My software tools, DDC summary. This one is DDC summary. Okay. And then let me see. Yes. This is what these are the software tools here you see. Is the DV hierarchy is there and then his site. This his site to WS converter. This particular one is you can convert that one, the his site software downloaded and web of science converter and research metrics calculator. One thing, and this is the research metrics calculator. This is the web version. So you can go to this place so for calculating the impact factor of any journal. So only thing is that you have to find, give the year here for which year you want to identify the impact factor. Suppose you want to identify the impact factor of a journal of 2020. Then you have to count the number of citations, number of articles published in 2019 and 18. So now you have to write that one total citable items. How many? Total articles were published in the year 2019. Suppose if this is a quarterly issue, the journal, and eight for every issue. So eight into four, that is 32. 32, and this one also 32. So total citable was 64. And in 2019, how many articles cited that one? So suppose this was 8 and this was 10. So obviously you'll see total cited 18 and this is your impact factor. So this impact factor calculation, you can do this one. You can, so you know that for the impact factor um, development or rather identification of impact factor, calculation of impact factor is already given uh, in different websites. So you can take this one from this place and at the same time you can go to this place also that is what uh, so y o u t u b e youtube and if you go to youtube and then this one is as question view that is it manage your Sign in again. No, okay, you see, this one is my institutional ID and I want to change this one as this one. And this one and go to YouTube and change this ID to sign out and then
Sorry. What a wind. Sunte bas chugi chug. No. And I'm sorry. সাইন আউট করেছে সেই জন্যই মনে হয় এখান থেকেও সাইন আউট হয়ে গেছে হ্যাঁ अगेन इट विल बी कंटिन्यू डोंट नो Did you get that one? The different things I actually in a hurry I shown you a lot of things. So right now I think it's too much. Yes, yes. You raised your hand. Okay. Sir, I couldn't see anything. You couldn't see anything. Sir, each one of us couldn't see anything. Why? He oh. was left, sir. Yes, I. I because you see that particular video okay you didn't get my youtube channel that one no no sir no sir so okay, okay let me see who can rather show you now let me present uh, my entire screen now see are you getting uh, this one this youtube yes sir okay now you see this is my youtube channel okay and here you will see this thing and this one the second one impact factor journals as per journal citation report this particular video hmm, okay so so this is what so this is here so you can have this one from those place if you want to get that one the impact factors or like that okay and uh, with this i think um uh, click sharing and other thing is so last thing we did that one that is the citations so apart from citations what we have that is a citation then research big data messy data text mining i will like to talk that one in later so right now it's too much because right now it is 1.38 so i am taking this one for near about 1 hour and 30 minutes oh god you people are not saying anything okay so closing this one right now and stop sharing okay so now i think it is the high time to complete so if you have any other thing to know 
you can ask me or if you are hungry and you want to quit so just tell me goodbye kal class hobe kal class hobe tomorrow saturday na kal ke aaj class hobe aaj ke korechi aaj dorkar nei eto class kore okay abar sombar मजार बेपारेक्स He develops science citation index. Web of Science is the product of Thomson Reuters, and that's why all the articles he wrote that is actually kept in Web of Science, and Web of Science is recording that one. So obviously, Garfield is the person who is who contributed a lot on scientometrics, written several numbers of papers, and everything is included in Web of Science, and that's why he stood till then. He is considered as number one author uh, who, who contributed that one in the field of this one. That is the scientometrics. That is the metric studies in library and information science. Not all the all the places he, he wrote in different subjects also, but that is restricted. Okay, so okay, now I am feeling hungry. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So I am. Okay, I am recording this one. So I think this particular.